What's up, Brian Tong here with your Google-licious for everything Google we can pack inside of a show. Now, we're all curious how Google's Android-powered Daydream, their virtual reality headset, will come together, but a report from Recode claims Google had been working on an internal project for a high-end standalone VR headset that would have been similar to the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. The headset reportedly came from the Google X Research Lab that was also working on a separate non-Android-based operating system for the device. Now, the report claims the project was axed to focus on the mobile VR space and their Daydream platform. But a follow-up report from Engadget says that Google is still working on their own standalone headset, describing it as one that blurs the line between virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, Engadget reports it will offer features that are more in line with what augmented reality systems have and will not require a computer or phone to power it. Now, let's be real. Just put Minecraft and Pokemon Go as launch day apps, and you're good to go. You can even put some of the pieces of the past together to see where this is going. The Google Glass project, Google's $300 million investment in the super secretive and mind-boggling company Magic Leap, and their recently scrapped standalone virtual reality headset. Now, there is no reported release date for this headset in sight, and Gadget also suggests that this headset could be the VR one reported on earlier, and it remains an important part of Google's future plans. All right, Android 7.0 is officially Nougat, we know that, and the Developer Preview 5 is the final one before the official release becomes available. Again, this is a dev preview, so I suggest you don't use it on your primary phone. Factory images can be found at the Android developer site, or you can enroll in the Android beta program to get the update over the air. Android Nougat brings split-screen multitasking, a redesigned notifications pull-down with new functionality, quick access to your previous apps, and a customizable night mode and more. All right, Android Wear 2.0 also gets its second developer preview release with the biggest edition now allowing third-party developers to add wrist gestures to their apps. The Android Wear preview can only be installed on the Huawei Watch and the LG Watch Urbane Edition second edition right now. And the Alphabet Own Nest launched its newest product with the Nest Cam Outdoor for $199. It's a weatherproof security camera with 1080p video and a 130 degree field of view. It also taps into Google's machine learning and algorithms by being able to distinguish between a person versus a dog or a car, but no word if it can distinguish between a wolverine and a honey badger. The honey badger has been referred to by the Guinness Book of World Records as the most fearless animal in all of the animal kingdom. It really doesn't give a and Samsung has officially announced its Unpacked event will happen on August the 2nd, just like we expected. And their invite alludes to the rumored Galaxy Note 7 with a 7 in blue right next to Unpacked 2016. We already know way too much about it, but we're finally getting the best look at the rumored Iris scanner with a few pictures showing the Iris scanning feature set up in action on a Note 7. Now, the Note 7 is expected to feature a 5.7-inch QHD curved Super AMOLED display a 12 megapixel primary camera, 5 megapixel secondary one, the latest Snapdragon or Exynos processor, 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage, a micro SD, and an IP68 dust and water resistance rating. So you don't have to watch the keynote now. And Samsung really has a lot of momentum going into this keynote. And we might look back at 2016 as Samsung's year after a report by Kantar World Panel says the combined sales of the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge have surpassed the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus in the US. Believe it. Now, in the second quarter of this year, Samsung made up 37% of smartphone sales, with Apple reaching 29% in the US. Now, part of that is because the two companies' upgrade cycles are now six months apart, but it's still an indicator that Apple's days of explosive growth have ended. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.